In today's video, we're taking a look at how to crimp electrical connectors easy and simple. This is so easy, anyone could do everything that we use on the video. We're gonna leave a link on the description. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. That does help us out a lot, thank you. So you woke up today and connecting things is in your mind. Don't worry, here at the Satterbox team, we've got your back. A taxi ride away, but a back is a back. And other than yourself, these are the things that you're gonna need. First are the electrical connectors, and these are available in three forms. Non-insulated, insulated, and lastly, insulated, with a heat shrink material all in one. No matter which of the three you use, the technique will be the same. The great thing about insulated, not only it protects your connection, but also you may notice that they're color coded. So it makes it easier to identify which wire connector you need for the gauge of wire that you're using, but it also helps you know which side of the crimper to use when crimping. And the general rule of thumb is that red is from 16 gauge, all the the way up to 22 gauge, blue is from 14 to 16, and yellow from 10 to 12. And the good thing about buying a kit is not only you get an assortment of different sizes, but also different types of wire connectors like ring terminals, fork terminal, spade male, spade female, and even butt splices. And the last one is when it gets rated R. And usually you can find on the kit on the front an information sticker that lets you know how many pieces of each you have, the gauge of wire is suited for, it usually has a reference in millimeters as well, and that can give you the ability to start your journey running. The next thing that you're gonna need is a crimper. And this is a ratchet style crimper, which can handle from 10 gauge to 20 gauge. And this one is from eye crimp. So as you can see on the crimping teeth, we have the three different colors, red, blue, and yellow. So that means you can color match your insulated wire connector to its corresponding color, making the job a lot easier. Next, we're gonna need some wire strippers. No, and you won't need dollar bills for this one. This particular one is a Klein's tool self-adjusting stripper that could handle from 10 to 20 gauge solid wire and from 12 to 22 stranded wire. It can handle Romex 12.2 and 14.3. The great thing about a self-adjusting stripper is that it takes the guesswork out of stripping. You just place the wire and it does the job for itself. The only thing that you have to give it is that good old squeeze. And remember, no matter if you use this particular tool or a different one, the technique is the same. And when stripping wire for wire connectors, you want to aim for an exposed wire of 3 8 to half of inch. You also want to make sure that the wire is straight at the connection. And by hitting those marks, what it does is you don't have under exposed wire or you have too much wire that it's sticking out. And now that we filled your brain with data, we're ready to start. We choose our desired style connector and size according to the wire. And remember, if you don't know the size of wire that you're using, you can always try different sizes. Sizes. What you want is a snug fit. So a pro tip starting from small to biggest is the way to go. Usually the first one that fits, that's the one. Cause you don't want it too big that when you crimp it, you have excess to the sides. And when you pull on the connection, it comes out. Now that we have the correct size and style, in this case, we're using a ring yellow terminal, which is used for 12 to 10 gauge. In this particular case, we're using a 10 gauge wire. We're gonna choose the yellow open opening for teeth on our crimper, we want to make sure that our terminal connector and crimper are parallel to each other or in one direction before we go ahead and squeeze. And we want to make sure that our crimper bites down on all the insulated part, not the insulation of the wire or the terminal at the end. The good thing about these ratchet style crimpers is that once you use your beautiful strong hawk hands and squeeze, you'll feel it stop and that means you're done. If we take a look in a different angle, we like to start our crimper from the top and crimp. You can always look inside of your wire terminal to see how far to the top the connector is or to the bottom. And like that, have an idea where you want to crimp. And a pro tip, always remember to use both arms for an even pump. And the most important pro tip is that after you crimp, you want to pull on the wire connector to make sure that it is secure securely in there. Let's say if you want to go a step further, you can always add heat 
shrink paper on your connection. Not only this protects your connection, it provides a stronger grab and connection for the future. And when crimping a butt splice after you have both wires stripped, what you want to do is take each wire and insert it on each side of both ends of the butt splice connector. And then with your crimping tool, you can go ahead and crimp in the middle. Then to verify that you have a secure connection, you could crimp a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. The other way you can do it, instead of starting by crimping in the middle, you can crimp on one of the sides and then do the other side. Let's say you can do the right side, crimp, and then do the right side and crimp. But at the end, the technique will be the same. And now you done it. You're an electrical connector champion of your town. Don't forget, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, place them in the comment section below. Either someone on the Statabox team or someone on the YouTube community can help you out with an answer. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on social media. Thank you for watching and here's a link to our latest video.